month, I discovered a small, hard area on the right side of the vulva, and it hurt. I was diagnosed with the terrifying word known as cancer. I had to be by myself for about three days to come to grips with it. This can't be happening to me. My reaction to being told that I have cervical cancer was, I'm 31 years old, I have three young children. How could I possibly have cancer? Cancer is an abnormal growth of cells that will either grow locally or spread to another part of the body. And when you have that abnormal growth of cells, it can crowd out other normal, healthy parts of the body. Radiation is a cornerstone of the treatment of cancer. When we think about the tools that we have to fight cancer, we think about surgery, treatment that will affect the entire body, such as chemotherapy or targeted therapy, and now potentially immunotherapy. Radiation has a more local effect. Radiation targets the very center of the cell, the DNA, and it breaks DNA into pieces. When you break the DNA, you're able to slow that rate of growth or potentially stop that growth entirely. And the cell will shrink and eventually get absorbed by the body. Radiation therapy is a very important part of the management of, of female cancers, especially of the gynecologic tract. Radiation therapy can be used in cooperation with surgery. In many cases, radiation therapy is the primary treatment, often combined with chemotherapy, which may make it more effective. Radiation therapy is an invisible x-ray beam that travels through the body, and there is no pain associated with it. The x-rays are applied to the area that we are trying to target, and once that process is done, the treatment for that day is over. We know that cancer recurrence can generate from just one cell, and that's the premise behind using radiation after surgery. First couple doctor's visits that I actually went to, I cried the whole time. You have so many things running through your mind. Um, what stage is it? How bad is it? Can it be cured? What if I don't make it? Many patients, whenever they get to see the doctor, their mind goes blank. So bringing somebody to the doctor with them always helps. They have another person who may think of a question that they wanted to ask, but then just forgot whenever they saw the doctor. I'm going to let you have a seat on this table, and I'm going to cover you up. In order to deliver radiation therapy carefully and to know that we're delivering treatment to the area at risk, we will do something called a simulation prior to radiation. This is a process whereby we'll either do x-rays or CAT scans, even occasionally MRI scans, that allow us to visualize and see a patient's anatomy and the position of their organs. With GYN cancers, the mobilization devices that are used are to be able to keep their legs in the same spot every day to make sure that they don't move their legs during treatment. Certain marks will be placed on a patient's skin, and we will use those marks and lasers in the treatment room every day to verify that the patient is lined up in the exact proper position. After the patient has all of their imaging done, we bring those images into dosimetry and we start the treatment planning process. The physician contours the target and we start planning with beams um, and, and putting the dose on the plan. There are a number of different radiation modalities that are used in the treatment of female malignancies. We have external radiation and that's where you bombard a tumor with a very, very strong x-ray. You can also use internal radiation therapy, which is usually delivered by a technique called brachytherapy, which is where you will place radiation, for example, into the vagina or within the uterus to place a radioactive source very close to a tumor and therefore reduce doses to the surrounding organs. Oftentimes, external radiation therapy may be combined with brachytherapy, although brachytherapy can also be utilized on its own. There have been studies that demonstrate including brachytherapy can improve cure 
and reduce side effects comparing to delivering a higher dose with just external radiation alone. Brachytherapy is often a source of anxiety for a patient. Some patients in some facilities may have general anesthesia. Others may have a spinal, which can numb the lower extremities and lower part of the body. More commonly in the United States, patients may receive some form of sedation or mild sedation, or even just pain medications alone for the procedure. Patients will have some form of imaging during which time the physician, with the help of a physicist or a dosimetrist, will determine where you need to place the radiation to be most effective. As part of that process, we'll determine what surrounding tissues need to be protected from radiation exposure. We'll spend a couple of hours working together to try to formulate a plan that can deliver that radiation in the most effective way. Thank you. So let's get it transferred over to QA. All right. Thank you. The patient will be taken to a special room where they are attached by a catheter or a rubber tube to usually a small unit that can deliver a small radioactive source. Thereafter, the sources are retracted, the device removed, and after a short time where we monitor the patient, the patient is discharged to home. For GYN patients to get their radiation treatment every day, the patient will come and undress from the waist down and put a gown on to make sure we can see those marks that we placed in the CT sim. During GYN treatments, a lot of the patients are concerned about modesty. Once we get to where we need to with the positioning, we'll cover them up as much as we possibly can. We can see and hear them at all times, so it does help them be at ease, knowing that we're watching throughout the whole treatment. It's definitely very important for the patients to relax. During radiation, the patient will not feel anything. All they hear is like a buzzing sound. The most common side effects from radiation for cervix, vaginal, vulvar, or endometrial cancers are mild. They're typically transient, not long-lasting, such as frequent urination, loose or frequent bowel movements, skin redness or darkening, potentially some hair loss down in the pelvis only, fatigue, low blood counts. More serious side effects are less common, happening in a very small minority of patients. You don't feel the radiation, but when you have to go sit down on the area that you sit on where the cancer is, it can be rough. It's very tender. Okay. Thank you so much. I am in week seven of my radiation therapy. One of the major side effects that I've had is diarrhea and nausea. Another side effect that I experienced was extreme weight loss. If you are experiencing any of the side effects that I have experienced, my best advice is to just talk to your doctor. Make sure you let him know everything, every, everything that's going on. It is very important that women with gynecologic malignancies talk openly and comfortably with their healthcare team regarding their concerns about sexual function and health before, during, and after radiation therapy for gynecologic malignancies. The common side effect that I see for radiation for gynecologic cancers is vaginal stenosis, and that is the narrowing or shrinking up the vaginal vault post-radiation. So what that means for a patient is that they have issues with intercourse and their routine pelvic exams with their physician. There are a lot of other pelvic floor issues that patients may have, stress incontinence or urge incontinence, and that is leakage of urine with laughing, coughing, sneezing, or an, an urgency to get to the bathroom, or issues with fecal incontinence or constipation issues. There are many things that can be done for um, bowel and bladder issues and sexual functions, but you need to tell your physician so that they can help you. The treatment of gynecologic malignancies with radiation can be challenging, but our success rates are typically quite high. The majority of women with vaginal, vulvar, 
cervical and uterine malignancies are often cured. If not cured, radiation has oftentimes the ability to prolong a patient's life and reduce symptoms associated with these cancers. I am one year out, which means I am free of cancer for one year. It was pretty rough, but it is worth it to get rid of the cancer. When I found out I had cancer, I mean, everything is different. You learn to appreciate the small things in life. You don't take a lot of things for granted anymore, you know? I'm 31 years old with stage three cervical cancer. This is the toughest thing I've ever done, and I am going to continue to fight. 